the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, beginning verse 36. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish And he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the course of my ministry, I've read this passage dozens, if not hundreds of times. And every time I've focused on that last verse, we read, you are witnesses of these things. And we will get to the importance of that verse, that we are witnesses. But before we go there, I want to look at what jumped out to me this time. Somehow I'd never really noticed verse 41 before, where Luke records that as these first disciples, these first disciples, witnesses to the resurrection are meeting the risen Christ it says while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering they were disbelieving they're encountering the risen Christ in the flesh in some form of physicality who has come to them and they were disbelieving and still wondering not only that Luke says earlier in the passage that they're frightened and that they have doubts in their hearts that they're startled and terrified they're anything but great witnesses ready to go and proclaim the good news of God's love alive risen from the dead in Jesus the Christ they are full of this mix of emotions Think about your own experience in faith. I think this might be a better, more authentic or genuine description of the faith journey that most of us have had where there have been times that we were fearful, that we had doubts, that we were disbelieving or still wondering what is God doing in my life. It's clear that encountering The risen Christ, God's love alive through Jesus Christ can create great angst, trepidation, confusion. So many Christians I've talked with over the years carry this kind of anxiety with them that they're not good enough to be a Christian, that somehow they have to be perfect for God to love them. They have wondered about a certain Christian doctrine or had questions about a certain biblical story and somehow they have this expectation of themselves that they would have no questions or no doubts if they were a good Christian and so they have this anxiety that somehow they're not really a person of faith because of these questions and these doubts that they carry within them but if we use this story from Luke as a template for Christian experience, it makes it clear that we should not be surprised 
when we have this mix of emotions about faith, when we have questions about something we've been taught or something we've read, when we have doubts about whether or not God is really alive and at work in our lives. For these first disciples, the ones who walked with Jesus and talked with Jesus in the flesh are having the same thing bubble up within them as they encounter him. This story gives us permission, in a sense, to be more honest and open about our own doubts or wonder or disbelief. Dr. Leslie D. Weatherhead was one of the great Methodist pastors in England in the last century. After his retirement, he wrote this book of nearly 400 pages called The Christian Agnostic. He addressed questions that parishioners had asked him over the course of his ministry, people who had so many doubts and wondered if they were really Christian for trying to figure out theological propositions or what happens after death or how does God really work in our lives. And he has this concept that he sets forth in the book for those of us who have had that experience of question and doubt. He suggests that we have this mental drawer and that we should label it awaiting further light. And when we have questions that we have not found a satisfactory answer to, or if we have doubts in our own hearts about a particular part of our faith or our faith journey that we have yet to crystallize in our thinking that we just take it and put it in that drawer he says way too many people throw the baby out with the bathwater. that when they have questions they lose completely their faith or they give up on god he said so much better to set the question in the drawer and stay within the christian community and to continue the quest for faith could you do that with your questions or your doubts? Put them in that mental drawer awaiting further light, trusting that God will lead you to the right place as you continue your journey. This story says it's all right to have those questions and doubt. It's all right to be honest when you're dealing with fear or anxiety. Or wondering about some aspect of your relationship with God. Luke says these first disciples needed more than their initial experience with Jesus to overcome their fears and doubts about believing or following Jesus. Some of us need that kind of help too. This short story says that these first disciples struggled to make sense of the resurrection. I'm sure some of you have struggled that way as well. Luke tells us that these folks needed help understanding the scriptures. Most of us have needed that kind of help too. But Luke goes on to say that Jesus as the risen Christ comes to them to help them you could even say that jesus comes to serve them even today some of you have had that kind of direct experience with the risen christ or the holy spirit but more often people i talk to say that when they have struggled that the help we need happens through the body of christ most folks I talk to say they have a combination of experiences between God's kind of prompting in their lives or guidance in their lives and the help and support that they've received from others in the community that have helped them move through life growing in faith. It's the church, the body of Christ that Jesus initiates for that very purpose to hold us together, to help us navigate the ups and downs of our faith and our life. This is a great illustration that doubt and fear does not mean the end of faith. 
doubt and fear anxiety questions and doubts are all a part of growing in faith of growing in grace of encountering christ alive it can be disturbing and distressing and disruptive in our lives when god comes to us in a powerful way and yet luke says that these disciples stayed together and it's a template for us to hang together as disciples when we come into times of chaos or disruption or change or loss if you read on beyond the end of luke to part two of what luke wrote which in the scriptures is called the book of acts we find out that these disciples that he describes here as startled and terrified and frightened and doubting and disbelieving the book of acts tells us they do become great witnesses that they do experience the power of holy spirit leading them forward in their lives that in fact they fulfill this destiny that jesus tells them about in verse 48 you are witnesses of these things and they go on to be witnesses for the rest of their lives god uses their witness and god can use our witness as well we are to be the living body of christ we are to be living witnesses in our everyday lives we're going to read a prayer in a moment right at the end of the communion litany before we receive the elements that speaks of all of this it says pour out your holy spirit on us gathered here make us one with christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world grant that we that means all of us May go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.